Okay, back here at the Monarch 10 E Wave. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, how I set tool height. Not how you should set tool height, but how I do things. So you do things the way you want to. I'll show you how I do things. Okay, I've got an antique um, stare at height gauge here. And uh, I use this to set my tool height. And I'll show you how I zero it. In the collet chuck here, which runs true because it's adjustable <laughs> for run out. There is a 3 8 diameter piece of drill rod in there that measures very accurately to 3 8 So, you take the height gauge and you bring it to the top of that, then subtract 187 5 thousandths, 3 sixteenths of an inch, and then Move it on the veneer, and suddenly you're on center. Okay, I'll have to move the camera for the next part. All right, I took a tool holder, and uh, it's dedicated to this. I have a piece of high-speed steel in there, and I put that in the tool post. And then I bring the point on over here the scribe and adjust it to that okay so when I put tools in here like let's say this one then I can check and I can see that that one's too high so I'll have to adjust that that's a brand new micro 100 bit you'll we'll probably use that on this screw cutting here but another thing I can do is, let me get that other tool back in here. I hope you can see this stuff okay. Yeah, I think you can. Okay, so there's an attachment, and I don't know if that thing's got a number on it, but uh, Will the Blade found one of these things on eBay. It's, a, it's an indicator here, see? So you can bring that on over on the top of that, once that's set, and then adjust it. Push it with my thumb a little. It's kind of tight, I'm loosen it. Then you can adjust that, kind of, Let's see if I can get that. There we go. It even, it even went to zero. Okay, let me take the camera loose. So you can see this. Now, this matters more on tiny diameters, you know, to have your tool centered. Okay, so I've got this set on zero here. And if I want to, I can adjust the, I can adjust it uh, a thousandths or two, or whatever I feel it should be, up or down. Let's see if I can move that. Yeah, see? That's moving it up, and that's in thousands. Now, you might want to adjust uh, boring bars for torsion. You know, they're going to twist a little under, under stress. Now, maybe I'm picking up the small little threads of things, but you got to understand that this is one of the best machines ever made, and you really got to put the effort in it to get what it's got, you know, to take advantage of the machine. You just don't uh, toss stuff in it like you do the old axle set. You take a little more care. Okay. So, i show you how I set tools and how I can slightly adjust them as needed. And I'll also use a tool and cutter grinder to grind these simple tools for consistency. <laughs> okay, but I do, I do the radiuses by hand using a small little uh, 
uh, comparator and it seems to work for me. One of these days maybe I'll have room and get a real comparator in here. But I do alright with what I've got and it's real portable and I can do it on the fly. Okay, I'll be back with more here real quick. Okay, over here at the cutter grinder, I got a Micro 100 tool mounted in a holder here at the right height over there for the Monarch layer. I get that uh, dropped in there and I'll touch that tool up. Okay, I got a little vacuum here to get that uh, turbine all locked in. Okay. Get me over here and still see me. I'm going to touch that uh, wheel up a little bit with this dressing stick. That looks good. Okay. Get it all in there. That's still pretty easy. There we're contacting. I usually cut them back about 5,000. Maybe a little more. I got it set at 11 degrees clearance. Look how that looks. Then go a little bit more. A little bit of a chip on there. Maybe about three or four thousand. That should be it. Yeah, I'll polish that up a little bit like that. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks, uh, that looks good. Okay, I'm going to take the, uh, diamond lap and uh, put a little bit of a radius on that. All right, I've set up the cut here. Going to oil up the waves a little bit like this guy Bill used to. A lot of oil on those things. <laughs> All right. We're gonna start cutting. I'm gonna have to get the oil back here. Oil in it. Okay, now these are some pretty small screws. And we're running out. We'll pick it up a couple thousand here. And I'll touch off on the front. I don't need that back there right now. I don't know if you can see the cut. Okay, I'm touched off right there. I'm going to set the travel dial and start working this down. Let's see what I get for the feet here. It might be a little fast. We'll see. thousandths. short screw. Okay, I'm going to set that to zero. 
you know, it takes me a lot longer to uh, video this than it actually takes to do. <laughs> okay, so we're going to down the bottom. Land here, we're going to land here. Oh, 184,000. So we'll just cut it down a little bit. Walk that in, take about 10, 20, 30. Drive near some more. This is a uh, oil hardening drill rod. And the tool is Micro 100. Nice blue chip there. Let's see where we are in a minute here. 25. Let's see how close I am. I got a micrometer right here. Check that out. I have 40. I should take, I should take another couple. Because I'm going to hit this right on the thousands. Get that started. Oh, 
a 12,000 scalp. Nice. Going to break that edge just a little bit. Okay, I've got this uh, rod turned down to the diameter of the screw, and that's where I want the thread to stop right there. So I'll set the travel dial to zero here. Set it to zero on both dials. Then I can back this tool off and take it out. Now down here, is the stops for the electric lead screw reverse. Make sure all these things are loose right now. This one's loose. Now I've got it, there's a fork under here and I'm going to bring it right to the, the fork. Let's see, let's get the spindle running. And it should be running at just about 500, I think. Yeah, it's about 500. You hear the growl at the, at the end, at about 550. You hear the growl at the end train. I got it set for 52 threads per inch. So I, I got this dog loose here. And I'm bringing it up to that fork. Got the fork retracted. Right about there. And I snug it. Kind of a tight little thing. Okay, that's good and snug. Now I'm going to turn this knob here until it, until it shuts off. That pushes the fork into the stop dog. Right about there. Then I lock this. That locks the fork. <laughs> okay, now we're going to back it off here. And I think we're... Let's make sure everything's engaged and looking good. Okay, it's got to go into one more lever here. We are in feeds. We need to go up to threads. We are... Threads inch. Threads inch. Yeah, we're in the, we're in the right, right groove here. Okay, we're going to back that off. Start it up here. I'm gonna watch the thread dial. Oh. Does that sometimes? It doesn't go in the gear. I think that's it. Finicky little thing sometimes. Yeah, it feels like it snapped in good. I just didn't have it snapped in. So we'll start it again. We'll watch the thread dial. I'll engage it on number one. Whoop. <laughs> I didn't have it in the uh, uh, neutral position. I always like to put it on number one. That's cooking pretty fast for a thread, isn't it? Okay, got number one coming up here. And we are engaged. And we'll watch the thread dial, or the travel dial. And look at that. It, it over-traveled two thousandths of an inch from where I sat it. And I call that good. Okay, so let's cut this thread. Get you hooked in there. I got greasy fingers. Hope I can get it on the lens. That looks pretty good. Okay, we're gonna put the uh, tool in and be sure and lock it down. Now I got this set. See, it stopped right there. That looks good. That looks good. Now, now I'm gonna back it off. Now the half nuts are engaged. All right. Okay, 
put a zero on the stop. I'll put a little bit of lube on here. And we'll cut this thread at 550 RPMs on a Monarch 10 WE. 52 threads per inch. Now I'm going to withdraw the tool at the very end of the thread by hand. Here we go. I forgot to feed it in, but it's okay to do a dry run. Looks good. I'm going to feed it in so it bites uh, about six thousandths. Okay, here we go. That's it. Run it back. Set it to zero. I'm going to feed it in another eight thousandths. Lube looks good. Ready to go. Just like that. Isn't that slick? Look at that. Okay, I'm going to back it off. I'm going to file it real quick here. I can't disengage it, you know. Okay, see how it looks. I've got these loops here, and i got to use them. How's it looking? About another five thousandths deep. So we'll do that. Then I'll set it in, set it at zero. We're Oh, oh, stuff slipped here. That's not good. That's not good. I'll be right back. I gotta reset this dial. Okay, I accidentally bumped the dial lock with my finger, and this is gonna be the last cut. Just about two thousandths depth. That's it. Run it back. Do the filing on the rebound. Oh, gorgeous thread. Really, really nice. Okay, I'm gonna finish this screw and I'll come back for the finish. Oh, I forgot to turn the camera on, but I got a little neural on that. Let me uh, take and trim this a little bit. I have to drill a hole in the end. So you go and do that, and it makes it look kind of a little bit better. Looking good. Okay, that's how I make a screw using the electric lead screw reverse and uh, a higher speed leaves a cleaner thread. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'll take and clean up the back of that screw. I tell you, I sure like 5C collets. <laughs> Sometimes, most of the time I like them. That's nice. Well, look at that. Not a bad little screw, huh? Well, I got a couple more of these to make and a, a, a couple smaller. Same size head, but smaller. And I'll, uh, I'll probably uh, 
turn on the video for that. Maybe I can come up with a couple more tips and then show what they go to. Okay, have a good morning. I'll be back.